We hear on Daf Lamed Zayin Omid Aleph towards the bottom of the Omid, and we're discussing a brisa that deals with the Shnei Korolos, one Lashem and one Lazazel, and the language of the Torah is a little bit ambiguous. What do I mean? It says, Ben Asan Aron Al Shnei HaSeirim Gorolos. The literal translation indicates that there should be Gorolos Al Shnei HaSeirim. So that all told, you're going to have four different pieces of, uh, we'll call it parchment. You're going to write Lashem on two of them, Lazozel on two of them. And you're going to place two of them on each one of the two goats. What's that all about? Let's see it inside. Honor up, on. It's about 15 lines up from the bottom of the Omud on Lamed Zion. Vinasan Aron al Shneasiru Gorolos. Gorolos shall call Domar. First of all, the Bryson points out that these Gorolos can be made of any material. Later on, the Gemara is going to ask what's the Chidich here? What was the Habib that we need a certain material for the Gorolos? But then Yachal, perhaps I would think. After all, the Pesach says, Al Shnei Seiru Gorolos. Gorolos is in plural. And the word Gorolos is, is an adjective describing the Shnei Seiru. So each of the Shnei Seiru requires Shnei Gorolos. Shnei, I'm going to read to you the translation. He writes, Shnei Gorolos Shekos Valeim Lashem. And Shnei Gorol Shekos Valeim Lazosim. Now, what exactly, this is where I got stuck yesterday, does the Frisa here have in mind? I mean, we're trying to determine which of these two goats is designated Lashem, which Lazos. And now you have two Gorolos on each one of the Seirim. How are you going to figure this out? So the Meiri says that although you have two Gorolos that say Lashem and two this, the two Gorolos are attached to each other. So that when a coin digs his hand in and he chooses you know, one handful and he puts it on this side, the right side, and the other on the left side, it's going to be crystal clear which is Lashem and which is Azazel because the two Gorolos of Lashem are attached to each other. The two Gorolos Lazazel are attached. And again, you and I can ask, why would the Torah require two Gorolos? I mean, it doesn't seem to add anything. It doesn't change the lottery system by which we're going to determine which goat is this and which is that. But nevertheless, the Torah says Gorolos. Almond Lomar. Now we have to go weiter in the same pasuk. It says, "Gorol echad l'Hashem, Gorol echad l'Azazim," which means there's only one Gorol l'Hashem. Enkan l'Hashem elo Gorol echad, Gorol echad l'Azazim, Enkan l'Azazim elo elo echad. So we survive this. There's one Gorol l'Hashem, one Gorol l'Azazim, and now it's crystal clear. The Kohen Gadol will put one Lashem here, one Lashem here, and that's how we determine the two goats. But look at the next part of this part. Yachal, I might think, Yitain shall shame the shall azazel al 
ושל שם ושל עזוזר על זה. In other words, on the one hand, you're telling me you need goral echad la shem and goral echad la zaz. But on the other hand, you have to admit that it says goral los in plural. So now the Gemara is suggesting another interpretation of the word goral los. And what's going to happen is that you're actually going to take a goral Hashem and a goral Azazel for each one of these two goals. This is already the Arabian Nights. I mean, this is why. What do you gain through this process of Goralos if you're going to put a goral Hashem and a goral Azazel on each one of the two goals? He says in the name of Rashi and other Mepharshim, Kevan shall call Sa'ir, no saying, Gam Goral Hashem, but Gam Goral Azazel. Lo Mizbayer, this Goral is not going to clarify Ezel Hashem, Ezel Azazel, which goat goes where? He's going to have two Gorolas on each goat, and each goat gets Lashem and Azazel. Cohen, meaning the coin girl, Yivchar be Aza Seir Shiyirza Shiyal Hashem. And the purpose of the Goro in this Havamina now is to give the coin girl the leg room to choose which one of the Seirim will be Lashem. He can't do so without a Goro because the Goro requires that there be a kiddush Lashem, a kiddush of the soil Lashem, on each one of the two goats to make it possible for the coin Gadol now to choose which of the two goats he prefers for Lashem. He can only do so because each one of those two goats has a Goro Lashem. And how does he downgrade, so to speak, the other Gorol and, and, and the, I'm sorry, the other Sa'ir and call it Lanzo? So the answer is because each one of the two Sirim also received a lottery that said on it, Lanzo. So the Torah is giving carte blanche, it's giving a Kiddush in both directions for each one of the Sa'irim. Now, on the one hand, I understand this Havamina a lot better than I did the first Havamina of the Brysa, because the first Havamina was just a matter of technicality. You have two girls, Lashem, attached with a string. Why two and not one? There's, there's no meaning to that. On the other hand, the advantage of the first Havamina over the second was I understand that the Goral is operative. It's coming to be Mavara, which Sawyer is Lashem, which Lashem. The advantage of the second Avamino is that now if we take the word Gorolos literally and we're talking about the plural form of two Gorolos, I can begin to understand that you added an extra Goral in order to give each one of the Seirim a candidacy for each one of these two, La Shem and La Zaza. So at least there's some logical sensibility, if there's such a word, to why we're creating two Goralas for each side. But on the other hand, the Pella is that in the context of this Hava meeting, there's no clarification which is La Shem and which is La Zaza. Says Rashi, that's exactly what the Torah wants. The Torah wants the purpose, the agenda of this process of this of this service of our, of, of our enterprise of Gorolos is to give the coin gadol the bailus, so to speak. He becomes the balabas to decide which, sort. but he can only do that when there's a kiddush through this through the gorolos. 
So there's a double kiddush for each sire, and now the coin God will make the final call. He will decide which of the two seirim he wants, Lashem and which Lazos. Hamid Lomar, Gola, Goral, Echod, Lashem. When the Torah says Echad Lashem, it means there's a Goral, the Lashem Yochid, one single Goral Lashem. Enkan Lashem Ela Echad, the Enkan Lazozel Ela Echad. So the final determination of which goat is designated for which purpose is in the hands of the Goro, in the hands of the Almighty. The Kohen Gadol has no bias here. We do not can ask him for his approval to say yea or his veto to say nay. So the Gemara says, wait a second. You've now quoted the Pasa Goro Echad Lashem and you've excluded the simple, straightforward chuto shel mikrov gorolos in the plural. Can you do something to salvage some commentary, some insight as to why the Torah says gorolos? Ma talmud loma gorolos. She you shoven that both of these receptacles into which we put the gorolos should be made identically from the same material, the same size, which is interesting because we know that the two seirim have to be identical. Now we're saying that the two gorolos have to be identical. You have carte blanche to decide what material you want to use to make these two gorolos. You want to manufacture, you want to produce them out of gold or out of silver, but they both have to be identical. And so too, the size of these two gorolos has to be identical. Now, I said to you that the reference here is to the utensil, the receptacle, but I think that that's not correct. I think he's referring to not the receptacle, but to the, the girl itself. Let's see, just give me one minute here. Let me just see here, 48. No, that doesn't do for me. Ah, it's true. I made a mistake. The Mishnah's language, listen carefully. I didn't pay attention. Alfi Haisa Sham Uba Shnei Gorolos. So the two gorolos go into the kalfi. We're not saying anything here in this brisa about the kalfi itself. We're talking about the gorolos that go into the kalfi. They use shaman. Right? They're two gorolos on which we write Lashem and Lazot respectively. And those two gorolos have to be identical. Same material, same size. Now, remember that at the beginning of this brisa, we decided that any material would be fine for these gorolos. So, the Gemara says, Pshita lo tzricha l'chedesanya. I need it for a brisa. L'fisha matzidu b'tzitz. Sheshema kos, sheshema shem kosvo. Who shall solve? Here too, in the case of the gorol Hashem. It's like the tzitz, and we're inscribing the name of God, just like in the case of tzitz, we have to inscribe the name of God on gold, is therefore, I would think, by equation, by analogy, that the kalfi, that the goral on which we write Hashem's name should be made of zah, like the tzitz. 
And then we're going to have to go one step further. Once we create the Goro Lashem out of Zov, ipso facto, we're going to have to create the Goro of Lazazel out of Zov because we already derived from the Posse Gorolos that they should be Shavan. Almud Lomar, where does the Torah teach me Lafuke to exclude this logic? It says Goral Goral twice in the post. Let's read the post. It says Goral Echad Lashem, the Goral Echad Lazaz. It could have been much shorter. It could have said Goral Echad Lashem, Rasheni Lazaz. But it goes out of its way to say Goral twice, Reba. It's coming to be marve that you can use any material. You don't need gold for the gorolos. Shel zayis, riba shel egos, riba shel eshkaroa. Eshkaroa is a kind of a wood. These are different kinds of substances upon which, different kinds of wood and trees upon which we can inscribe the name Vashem or the word Lazazel. And that would be fine for the Gorolas. The mission says, Ben Katin, Osoch, Neymasar, Dad, Likiar, the uh, Kiar. What do they call the Kiar in English? Can you help me with that? I always forget that word. I have like a mental block. It's with an L, I think. He doesn't even have it here in the English. So there were only two spouts originally in the keel. And Ben Cotton added another 10 spouts to make it jack it up to the number 12. Lever. What's the word? Lever. L-A-V-E-R. Lever. How do you remember that, Steve? But I, I knew it started with an L. That's all I had to help me. Oh, no, we went to the Bryce. Uh, what was the goal? What was the agenda of Ben Cotton? Why did he want to jack up the number of, of these uh, valves to make it 12? So he wanted to have a maximum number of Cotton doing Kiddush Yadayim Raglayim simultaneously. So this is based on the Gemara on Daf Chafhei. And the Mishnah there says that there were 12 different parts of the Avoda of the Tamid on a daily basis. And each one of those segments of the Avoda was given and designated to another Kohen. And they instituted what's called a pious, also a lottery, to figure out which Kohen would get which of the 12, the 12, all told the 12 Kohen. So we want to have Kiddush Yadai Raglayim of 12 Kohen. Now, I'm not sure exactly what part had been cut. Let me offer two possibilities. One is, he was afraid of a kind of competition. We see over and over again that with regard to the Avodo, there was competition amongst the Kohen. It's a shame, a shadr, as we call it, but that's what it was. I mean, the Mishnah records where one coin was ru running up the kevesh in order to get to the Truma Sadech, and another one came behind him, and he pushed him over the ledge. He broke his leg. Even worse things went on. So rather than have, in the process of Kiddush Yadayim Braglayim, two spouts with 12 coin and vying and fighting their way up to the head of the line, the head of the queue, as the British call them, he wanted to have 
each coin of the 12 could go ahead and comfortably do the Kiddush Adayim Raglayim on his own. He didn't have to wait for, you know, until he would beat up another coin to get first shot. The other way of saying it is just that he wanted to make it more, he wanted to be more smooth to facilitate and speed up the process. And also keep in mind that the Kohen has a pressure day. He's in the Anche Mishmar. He's got a lot to accomplish in that day. Why do we want to burden him by waiting if he's the 12th guy on line till he can get up to the front of the line to do Kiddush and Daimram? The Siach Yitzchak adds another element into the equation, and that is reasons for the Kudshin themselves. Forget about the coin has to waste his time standing on the queue. He's number 12 on the list. But beyond that, you are being Ma'akev, the Avoda of the Karma. We need all 12 Kohanim to complete the job of the Tamin. We're going to delay the Karma Tamin because. We don't have 12 coin and coin cannot do the avoda before Kirchid Diamond Line. So Yehi Zichro Baruch, we should bless the memory of Ben Cotton. I wish I knew his name. Ah, maybe his name is Ben. Not Ben Goldfarb in this case, but Ben Cotton. I don't know what the word cotton means. Cotton used to come from the church. Cotton, maybe it indicates a level of humility. And Chazal speak over and over again how the coin has to have humility. The coin Godel should not be big on us. Now, I counted in the Mishnah on Chaf He 13 coin. Why would 12 spouts be sufficient? Don't all answer at once. The first of the 13 was the Shochei. Actually, he was the first to win the lottery, whichever coin won the lottery. And he got the job of Shechita. Guess what? He didn't have to be a coin. Even Burzon or Apple could have been, or Dolphin could have actually, I don't know who Galaxy is, but could have actually done the Shechita. Shechita's chair of Bizarre. And if Shechita's chair of Bazaar, we don't need Kiddush Yadayim Raglayim. Kiddush Yadayim Raglayim is only a necessary requirement for a Kohen. We don't need a Kohen for Shechita. And who figured this out? Not me. Ben Cotton figured it out way before me. And therefore, he was very happy with 12 spouts or forces. Oh, no, we learned it a Brysa. This Brysa is going back to the prehistoric times before Ben Cotton, Chakris, when it was time for Kiddush Yudayim Raglayim from the Kiar, Bimi Luo, the water in the Kiar was up to the top. And the Kohen, before he started, his avodos, Mekadich, Yodav, Raglav, Mina Elion, from the waters on top, right near the faucet. Arvis, by the time they got to the end of the day, and there was so many coin we had to do Kirsh Yadayim Raglan for the Avoda, the Kir was mostly on low ebb. It was only almost empty. Is Arvis Biri Dosa? Yardu Amayim. The, the water in the Kir was down to a low level. And now we have a problem. Because he's got to turn on the faucet, and the water level is very low. He says, Lo igia le gova is then says the Braissa. It was a beres on top for the morning, and the other bearers, because again, all told there were only two faucets in the Kiar before Ben Cotton came along. 
and the other bearers was lowered down in order to facilitate his Shadai Maglan in the evening. In addition to the great things and contributions of Ben Cotton, he also introduced a pulley system that would avoid the issue of Lina and allow the water to go in and out of the cistern. My Mukhli Amar Abaye Gilgala, it's a round wheel, the having the Shaka lay, that he did what's called the Shakea. In other words, he took the water of the Kiar in the evening, and with this pulley, with this wild, um, round wheel, he was able to lower the water into the bar, into the cistern in the Azara, and such that in the morning, he already has everything prepared to raise up the water from, from the Okay then, so this is where we'll, we'll call it a week and uh, I'm gonna wish you a great, a great Shabbos, Parshas, we have a double Parsha this week, Achimos, I'm sorry, um, uh, Bahar and, and Bukhukos. Allow me to add a comment here in the note. The name of the Siach Yitzchak. He writes, Why is the Brisa presenting a reality in which the Khanim need to do the Kiddush Adam Raglan in the evening when the water level of the Kiyar is so low? They already did the Kiddush Adam Raglan in the morning. And Lina will only be as far as tomorrow. Next day, they'll need a new Kiddush Adam Raglan, but the Kiddush Adam in the morning should last them through the whole day. And therefore, he says, If you have Hesech Adas and you discontinue your awareness of the Avoda, then you need a new Kiddush Adam Raglan. Oh, be often shabbat the erev konim shlo hayu babuka. There may have been situations, scenarios in which the konim did not show up for duty and clock clock in in the morning. They only showed up in the afternoon, and they needed kiddush yadayim raglan. Now, this brisa is a comment on our mishnah b'tchilo lo hayu lo kiyar l'kiyar l'shnei dadu, and the siyach yitzchok adds that it would seem from this brisa. Shlohoyu shnei habrozim zebit sadzeb. Ella, but rather one was lamala and the other was lamach. However, the Tosefta seems to clarify explicitly that the brozim, these forces, were next to each other immediately, zeb l'tzadzeb. And then ben kotin, tikein shnei masar brozim, kadei shikad shi shnei masar kotin yachtov. That initially there were two Khanim that were doing Kiddush Yadayim simultaneously. It was not that the Brazim was serving two different functions, one for the morning and one for the evening. The piski I read right, Shabrozin, Shaosib and Kotin, Hayulamala, Mitsara Dad, Ha Elyon, Shahibo Mitchil. But the Siach Yitzchak says, Asan ben Kotin, Lamato, Mitsara Dad, Tachton. Where did the four, where were the faucets of Ben Kotin added? Were they up on top or on the bottom? Says the Siach Yitzchak, they're on the bottom. Can they shoot you? I find them the Kaddish and they were Gam, but Erev. In order to facilitate Kishu Daim even at night. Fine. The Gemara now mentions that Munbaz, as the missionary records, a minute is also called Yodos Akelim, Shal Yomakipurim, Shal Zah. He singled out in his contribution of gold those Kalim that were used on Yom Kippur. So the Gemara immediately asks, why didn't he contribute that all the Kalim should have been of Zahav? It seems from our Mishnah that Mubaz only with regard to Yom Kippur. 
would dedicate and contribute the Zohar. He says, since Munbaz was moved by a spirit of generosity, he would have been willing to make vessels out of gold. Oh, I see. See, the Mishnah says, and we didn't emphasize this, that Munbaz also yados hakelim out of zav. Only the handles of the kelim. Wouldn't it have made more sense if the kli itself, not just its handle, would be made out of gold? And the Gemara, on Daf, on Zion, on the Bays, we're talking about the handles of knives, and these were made out of zav. And the knives themselves could not be made out of zav because if it was made out of gold, it wouldn't have been sharp. It wouldn't have been able to cut properly. We asked the following cash out of a Bryce records that Afhu even Munbaz also Hane Kalim, the Besisim, the lower part of the Kalim, where they sit on the ground or on, on the shelf. The Ogne Kalim. Ogne is Miloshan Aznai, meaning the different handles that you use to pick up the Kalim, the Yodos Kalim, the handles of the Kalim, the Yodos Sakinim Shal Yomaki Purim Shal Zah. Now, the Bryson mentions Yodos Kalim and Yodos Sakinim. You see that Kalim and Sakinim are two different categories. Yodos Sakalim and Yodos Shara Kalim. And even in Shara Kalim, Munbaz added Zav to the Yodos, but not to the Kli itself. So we go back to our original question why did Munbaz, in his gen generous spirit, Create golden kalim, not just the handles, but the kalim themselves. Tigua baye, bekatata, dinarge, vechatsine. This brisa is addressing the case of handles, of shovels, and sickles, and these are also like. Knives, sakinim. The efshal lasa kliatim vizod mitchum chol yishabech and malato hepe. It would not function properly if it would have been made from gold. And he adds the following. He says that although it's obvious that Munbaz's improvements to handles were not limited to knives, why didn't he make the utensils themselves out of gold? Why only the handles out of gold? And Abai interprets the handles of the utensils as referring to the handles of axes and adjuses. And these are utensils that cannot be made out of gold. Axes and adjuses maybe may have been used on Yom Hakipur to chop the slaughtered offers to chop, sorry, the slaughtered offerings into parts that will be sacrificed on the despair. Okay, then it's late, and we're going to end the year right now. And as I said before, have a great.